Hello, this is Rhett. I'm the physics stalker on Reddit. So I go through and I, if I see something on Reddit, the question, and I think it's interesting, I'm just going to answer it. That's what I do. I'm kind of like a stealer of questions, but I'm not really stealing. So I, I actually looked up this question and I saved a picture of it and then I didn't, I realized I didn't have the question. I didn't see the post, but it was a picture like this. Uh, and it showed these two masses hanging by strings uh, on the same length strings uh, with some, and they're, they're spread apart by some angle. I assume that they're both electrostatically charged. And so the question, I, I think the question would be, what's the charge on this? Because that's a very common question. So these two like tiny little balls, uh, they're both charged and they repel, and you want to find the magnitude of the charge if they have a mass m. So let's do this problem because I think that's a good problem. So let me draw the, uh, the force diagram for this mass right here. So here I have uh, that mass. There's the downward gravitational force, mg. Then there is the tension in the string. So strings are special in that they can only pull in the direction of the string. So that means that the tension is going to be this way. I'll call it T. Uh, and I don't know the magnitude, but I know the angle. So this angle, see if I, if I put this around the line right there, this angle has to also be phi. So I'll put it right there. And then, of course, if this is in equilibrium, there has to be some force pushing this way, and I assume that's going to be the Coulomb force. I'll call that Fc. And if this is in equilibrium, then I can say F net, the total vector force, is equal to zero, the zero vector, which means it adds up in both the x and the y direction separately. Okay, so we know the gravitational force uh, is mg, where g is a gravitational field. It has a value of 0, negative 9.8, 0 uh, newtons per kilogram. And I'm using my uh, this notation where it's just the x, y, and z components uh, for a vector. And I don't know t. Um, and the Coulomb force, it looks, technically it looks like this. Uh, it would be f c is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over the magnitude of r squared r hat. So in this case, this would be the vector r. And that would push this away if they're the same charge fc. Okay, I'm not going to do this in a super complicated way because I know that Coulomb force is in the x direction. So I can really treat this problem and just deal with the distance between these down there. I don't need to worry about the unit vector and stuff like that. Also, I'm going to assume that these two charges, these two masses have the same charge uh, because otherwise I won't be able to find the answer here. So let's deal with this question, this equation in, in two dimensions. I'm just looking at that ball right there. So let's say the uh, this F net X equals zero. If the net force, the vector net force is zero, then the vector force in the x direction has to be zero. So what forces do I have in the x direction? Well, I have this Coulomb force. I'm going to say this is equal to negative Fc. And then I have part of the tension. So here is a right triangle. And this is the x component. So if the magnitude of the tension is t, then this is going to be equal to plus t sine of phi. Because sine of phi is opposite over hypotenuse, I can solve for that and I get this. Okay, now let's go ahead and put in an expression for Fc. Um, I actually can find this distance, right? Uh, that distance right there is going to be, this is the length L, so this is r over 2. So I can say uh, r over 2 equals L sine of phi. So r, the distance between them, is going to be 2L sine phi. So I can put that in up here. I'm going to call k 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught just because it's easier to write. So this equation now becomes 0 equals negative k q squared, I'm assuming they both have the same charge, divided by r squared, and this is r. So 4L squared sine squared phi. And then I have plus t sine phi. 
So that's one equation. Now, I, I assume that I could get values for Q and L uh, and phi, but I don't know, and not Q, I'm trying to find Q, but I don't know T. So I can't really solve this equation. So let's go over to uh, the Y equation. So in the Y direction, I have F net Y equals zero. So I have a the horizontal, I mean the vertical component of the tension is going to be T cosine phi. And then I have in the Y direction is negative MG. So from this I can find T. T is going to be equal to MG divided by the cosine of phi. Now I can plug that in over here and solve this for Q. I need a new piece of paper because I planned this out poorly. Okay, so let me write down, uh, rewrite the two equations I have. So I have T equals MG over the cosine of phi, and then I have, uh, I'm gonna rewrite this as T sine phi equals K Q squared over four L squared sine squared phi. If I substitute in this T and, uh, well, let's solve this for Q first. So I'm gonna say Q squared is gonna be equal to four L squared sine squared phi times T sine phi. So I just multiply both sides by that. And this seems kind of weird. Uh, I'm going to get a sine cubed, but I'm just going to go along with it. Uh, and then I can substitute in my t value right there, and I get uh, q squared equals 4 l squared sine squared phi mg over cosine phi sine phi. Now I have sine over cosine. I mean, I could write this in a couple of different ways. Um, let's just write this as, hmm. I guess I'll write that as tangent, tangent phi. So this is going to be equal to 4L squared mg tangent phi sine squared phi. And that's the charge squared. Where'd my k go? There's a k. So it should be all of this over k. And then I can take the square root, and I get Q equals the square root of 4 L squared MG tangent phi sine squared phi over K. And that's it. Now, I, I, I feel doubtful about my answer, so let's just check right here. This has units of newtons, and K has units of newtons. Uh, meters squared per coulomb squared. So if I take newtons divided by this, I get coulomb squared per meter squared for just this part right there. So mg over k gives me coulomb squared per meter squared. Now if I multiply that by L squared, the meter squared cancels. So that's good, I get coulomb squared. Tangent and sine have no units. And then I take the square root and I get coulomb. So at least it has the right units. Um, and that's the answer, and I think I'll just stop there.